Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Skydraid T12 2.4 GHz radio and video control system. In this video I'm going to go over the features of this advanced product, show you how to set it up and measure the latency of its video system. In a separate video, which is hopefully going to be released soon, I'm going to assemble the receiver unit on one of my drones and then head outdoors and test it out. The SkyDroid D12 system is based on three main components, a 12 channels remote controller, a radio transmitting and receiving unit, and a 720p 30 frames per second FEB camera. Now first of all, just to make things a little bit more clear, I would like to give you a quick glance on the system setup. The HD FEB camera is going to be connected to the radio transmitting and receiving unit, which is going to transmit the video feed and also the telemetry data back to the remote controller. In order to display this data, you're going to need to use a dedicated app and connect either an Android device or computer to the remote controller. Currently, the SkyDroid T12 system only supports Arduino-based flight controllers, such as the Radiolink Minipix flight controller, which I'm going to use in this video. The Minipix flight controller is going to be connected to the SBUS output of the radio transmitting and receiving unit in order to control the drone. In addition, it's also going to be connected to the telemetry port in order to transmit the telemetry data. In terms of packaging, here is everything you can find inside the box of the SkyDroid T12 system. So in addition to the three main components, which I've just showed you, you can also find the user manual, which is very useful and is available both in English and Chinese. USB to micro USB and USB to USB Type-C cables for connecting your Android device to the remote controller. Two rubber covers for the antennas of the radio transmitting and receiving module. You're also getting a hex key driver and screws for adjusting the remote controller, some stickers for marking its functions, and by default it comes set to mode 2, so you're also getting these parts that are going to help you to convert it to mode 1. Now let's take a look at the remote controller. It features a built-in 4000mAh lithium-ion battery, which according to the specifications should last for about 25 hours. Its output power is 100 millivolts, and under ideal conditions, it should provide you with about 20 kilometers of range. On its top side, you can find two RPSMA antenna connectors, and you should note that just like any other transmitter, you should never turn on the remote controller without the antennas being connected. In the center of the remote controller, you can find an adjustable phone or a tablet holder. So you can adjust it in this manner. You can also tilt it, and it opens up like that so it can accommodate a pretty big tablet. The SkyDroid D12 remote controller supports 12 channels, so in addition to the 4 channels of throttle, yo, teach and roll, you can find 8 more auxiliary channels. So first of all, on the top side you can find 4 3 position switches, and over here you can find another 2 positions buttons, so after turning on the remote controller, which is done by short pressing the power button, and then long pressing it. You can see that after pressing position A, for example, it lights up, and same goes for the other buttons. Now the remote controller is beeping since it's not connecting to a receiver unit, and in order to turn off the remote controller, you will need to short press the power button again, and long press it until it powers off. If you just want to check the status of the battery, you can short press it, and over here you can see an indication for the battery level, so each light represents 25%, so now the battery is charged to about 75%. Next to the power button over here you can find this button which is currently not in use, and on the bottom side of the remote controller you can find USB 1 USB port and USB 2 micro USB port. USB 1 is used for connecting the remote controller to your computer or Android device, in order to display the video feed and the telemetry data, and the USB 2 port is used for charging the internal battery of the remote controller, and also for just connecting it to your computer and get the telemetry data without the video feed. Now even though I still haven't flown any drone using this remote controller, I can tell you that the quality of the gimbals look pretty good, and the design of this remote controller is more intended to be used with fumbers. In addition, the gimbals are using a 3mm thread, and if you are a pincher like me, probably it's best to get this type of stick heads, 
and replace the ones that come with the remote controller in order to provide you with a better grip in case you are a pincher. Now, as you can see, the SkyDroid T12 remote controller does not feature a screen or any configuration buttons. So in order to configure and use it, you will need to download and install these three Android apps. The device helper app is going to enable you to configure the remote controller. The SkyDroid FV app is going to enable you to display the video feed and also display it in a floating screen in case your device supports it. And the SkyDroid Tower app is going to enable you to display both video feed and telemetry data. Now I've got the entire system wired up in the same manner it's going to be set up on a drone. The camera unit is connected to the ground, VCC, RX1 and TX1. Ground, RX2 and TX2 are connected to the telemetry port of the Minipix 5 controller, which provides the telemetry data. Plus 5 volts, ground and SBUS are connected to the RC in port of the Minipix 5 controller, which also powers up the receiver using plus 5 volts. By default, when you're getting the system, the receiver is already pre-bound to the remote controller. However, you should note that each time you bind the receiver, a new ID is generated, and currently there is no option to switch between different models. So if you wish to bind more than a single receiver, all of the receivers need to be set to binding mode, and you need to bind all of them simultaneously. In order to enter binding mode, you have two options. First of all, you can power up the receiver while shorting the mode key and ground pins. And the second option is to power up the receiver continuously six times. So let's count. And six. And you can see on the sixth time, now this LED over here is flashing rapidly, which means that now the receiver is in binding mode. In order to complete the binding procedure, all you have to do is just to turn on the remote controller. Now everything is powered up. And you can see that now this LED over here flashes in a green color every couple of seconds. Once you are going to turn on the remote controller, a link is going to be established. And now, as you can see, the LED over here turns solid green. Now I've got this Android device connected to the USB 1 port of the remote controller. First of all, let's open the device helper app. And over here, you can choose between two types of connections. You can choose either USB or Bluetooth. In case you choose Bluetooth, you'll need to select the T12 device and it's going to connect to its internal Bluetooth module. So first of all, let's enter adjust parameters. This beep indicates that the reading was successful. So each time you're going to press read or save, it's going to be indicated by a beep on the remote controller. Over here, you can adjust all the settings. You can reverse the channels, set failsafe modes, and etc. Under other options, you can set the telemetry baud rate, receiver output, which can be set to SBUS, PPM, or CBUS. By default, it is set to SBUS. You can save settings, read the settings, and also rename the Bluetooth module. Under hand settings, you can select between these four options. So you can choose between mode one, two, three, and four. And finally, under update device, you can choose to either update the transmitter or update the wireless update receiver. Moving on to the SkyDroid FPV app. This app is going to enable you to view the FPV feed and you can see that the FPV feed appears on the screen. Entering settings will enable you to enter VR mode. So in case you would like to use VR goggles, you can fly FPV using this app. In addition, you can also capture a snapshot or record your flight footage. And you can also display the video feed on a floating screen by pressing this button, allow permit drawing over other apps, go back, press it again, and now as you can see, the video feed is floating on the screen. Finally, inside the SkyDroid Tower app, you'll be able to monitor your flight and also see the video footage. First, you will need to hit connect. And now, as you can see, we are getting all the telemetry data. So over here, we can see the current voltage, the flight mode, RSSI. And since now I'm indoors, there is no GPS fix, so we cannot see the distance to home. Once you're going to get a GPS lock, you'll be able to see your location on the map and also perform other operations like arm your drone, follow me mode, and send a mission to your drone, which you are probably familiar with in case you used APM flight controllers before. Pressing the video feed is going to 
put the video feed in a full screen and display the telemetry data on the bottom and the map on the side and pressing the go back icon is going to get us back to the main screen. When you are in video mode, you can only snap a photo to the memory of your device and hopefully they're going to add a video option soon so you'll be able to record the video as well without using the second app. The next thing that I've done is to measure the latency of the video feed. In order to do that, I recorded the screen at 240 frames per second and turned off the light in my room. You can see that even without slowing down the video, the delay is very noticeable. And after calculating it, I found that it took 131 frames for the screen to go completely dark. And since each frame represents about 4 milliseconds, the latency is about 524 milliseconds, which is more than half a second. This calculation is not 100% accurate, but it can still give us a very good estimation. And this result pretty much tells us that the SkyDroid T12 system is not going to be suitable for drone racing, but for other users, I think it's going to be okay. And I'm looking forward to see how it's going to perform and what kind of range I'll be able to achieve. Now, before wrapping up this video, there is one aspect which I still didn't discuss, and it's the pricing of the SkyDroid T12 system. Currently, the entire system, including the radio transmitter, receiver, and the FEV camera, goes for $300. And I don't think the price is going to go up, of course, but anyway, the pricing is pretty good considering everything that you're getting, and that this is a long range system that uses LoRa technology and integrate a video transmission system. In addition to the flight test, which I plan to do soon, I'm also going to upload another video that compares the HD footage with a regular FED camera, and hopefully this test is going to be up in the next few days. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the SkyDroid T12 system, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.